Are you headed to Warsaw? And now you're right in the middle of all the planning. You're trying to do all the research. You're going from website to website, blog post to blog post, trying to figure out everything you need to know and do while you're there. Well, I've got you covered. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to make your trip perfect. Choosing a destination is only the first step in planning your dream European vacation. After you've chosen where to go, all the hours of research, planning, and booking begins. This can be frustrating and overwhelming. I will cover all the exact itineraries, logistics, expert tips and tricks so that you aren't burnt out before you even depart. This video is part of the larger Polish itinerary I talked about in my last video. You can watch it here. But this is the first leg of that journey, Warsaw. We're going to talk about everything Warsaw. Now, before we begin, I do need to do a little disclaimer that I cannot say Polish words. So I'm going to try my best, but a lot of the times I'll just won't even try and I'll just put the words on the screen and you can read it because I don't know how to say it. Warsaw is the capital and largest city of Poland. The official population is almost 2 million, but the greater area is more around 3 million. It is a wonderful city to visit. There's so much culture and history and wonderful things to see. You're not going to be disappointed. Okay, getting there. So Warsaw has two airports. The main airport is their big international airport. It's called the Chopin Airport. This is most likely the one that you'll fly into. It'll have the most flights in and out of the city, the best deals. There is another airport. It's called the Warsaw Modlin Airport. And you'll fly into there if you are on a low cost carrier such as Ryanair. Getting from the Chopin Airport into Old Town is no problem. It's really easy. You can get the 175 or the 188 bus, or you can take the train. The S2 train takes about 25 minutes. This train runs from 6 a.m. to about 10 or 11 at night. You can buy tickets at a kiosk, which has English options. Taxis can be found right outside of the terminal, and they are cheap and easy as well. Getting around Warsaw is really easy. It has a extensive public transportation network. It has the metro, it has buses, and it has trams. And you can buy multiple kinds of tickets. So you can get a long-term ticket if you're staying for a long time. But if you're there just for a couple days, you can either get a time ticket or a short-term ticket. So the short-term tickets are for one day or three days. And then the time tickets are for a certain length of time. So you can get a 20 minute, a 75 minute, or a 90 minute time ticket. And that just means you need to be done your trip in that allotted amount of time. Children from the ages of seven to 16 are a reduced fare. And then those under the age of seven or over the age of 70 are free. These tickets will cover all of the types of transportation in Warsaw. So it'll cover the metro, the buses, or the trams. You can get them at kiosks, and you can also get them actually on the vehicle. So if you get on the bus or the tram, there'll be little kiosks on there, and it, you can use card or a cash, and it'll have English as an option. Now, renting a car is always an option. We always rent a car when we're in Europe just because we enjoy the freedom it gives us. We can go any, anywhere we want, anytime we want. And Poland is a pretty easy place to be renting a car. It's pretty comparable to any big U.S. city. If you're used to driving around in a U.S. city, you'll be just fine driving around in Warsaw as well. A lot of the times when we're in Europe and we're in a city, we just park the car and then walk around or use public transportation if it's a, a really big, busy city. But in Warsaw, we actually did use our car quite a bit and, and it was totally fine. So that's an option as well. The prices in Warsaw. So I don't say specific prices on this video just because they're always changing, but I wanna give you kind of a rough idea of what things cost. So museums and palaces, they'll be probably between 10 and $20 to get in. A concert is around 25 to $40. Cooking class is around $50. A trip on public transportation is one or $2 per trip. And food at fancier restaurants will be around 15 to 25, but you can certainly get cheaper. 
and a taxi from the air airport or an Uber would be around $10. Okay, where should you go? What should you see? What should you do? So you're gonna start in Old Town. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's a charming and quaint area that's lively, full of people, street performers, all those sorts of things. During World War II, Nazi Germany bombed the city quite a bit. In 1944, there was an uprising from the people of Warsaw against the Germans. This was ultimately unsuccessful and it resulted in the destruction of Warsaw. Germany pretty much razed the city and there was widespread destruction. Once the war was over, the Polish people started to rebuild Warsaw and Old Town specifically, and they rebuilt it into a beautiful and charming area. Today, the Old Town feels like it never saw war. It's beautiful and a wonderful place to wander with colorful buildings, quaint cafes, pretty boutiques. Castle Square is the picturesque and historic square in front of the Royal Castle. So the Royal Castle was the former residence of the Polish monarchs. No cars are allowed in this area. It's a really delightful area to wander and to people watch. There are usually, usually street performers, kids playing, teenagers hanging out. The Royal Castle is now a museum. You do have to pay to go inside, but it's pretty cheap. St. John's Cathedral is one of the landmarks in Old Town. This is a 14th century cathedral. It had been rebuilt a couple times and it was almost all completely destroyed during the war. And after the war, it was rebuilt in King Stanislaw, the last King of Poland is buried here. If you want to go see where he is buried, you do have to pay a small fee to get into the crypt, but the rest of the church is free to wander around. There are concerts held here in summer months, so look that up if that's something that you're interested in. I do have a restaurant to recommend in Old Town. I'm not gonna say the name because I'm just gonna butcher it. I'm just gonna put it on the screen, but it was really quaint inside. It had a really good vibe and the food was delicious. It had traditional Polish food. We had guamki, which is the cabbage rolls. We had potato pancakes. We had pierogi, of course, kielbasa. It was all delicious and the prices were reasonable, so that's a great place to go if you want a bite to eat while you're in Old Town. Novi Shvat is a street that you can wander on. So this street traditionally ran from Old Town south of the city where a lot of aristocratic palaces and villas are. And now the street is just full of boutique shops and restaurants and it's a wonderful place to wander along and go shopping and and find a bite to eat. It's called the New World Street in English, and they say it's the longest restaurant because it's so full of food establishments. Novi Shvat is part of the larger Royal Route. This Royal Route traditionally was a communications route and it led from Old Town all the way down to Wajanki Park. And there's a lot of famous monuments and palaces and castles. Some of the things to see along the way are the Presidential Palace, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, the Palace of Culture and Science is a building you cannot miss. It's been a controversial building. It was a gift from Stalin to the residents of Warsaw. It kind of represents the influence of the Soviet Union in Poland, and so that's why it's con controversial. It's really large. It's the second largest building in Warsaw. It has a observation deck on the 30th Floor, so you can go up there and look over the city. Right now it houses a couple of museums and theaters. Um, there's a movie theater, there's a performing arts theater, there's a smaller concert hall, and then there's a science museum and a couple of other museums in there. All of the stops so far on this list have been walkable, but this next one you'll probably want to take public transportation to. It's Villeneuve Palace. To get there from Old Town, you can take the 116 or the 180 bus to the Villeneuve stop. This palace is known as the Polish Versailles. This is a Baroque palace and it's surrounded by manicured gardens. It was built in the late 1600s and was a former royal residence. In the palace, you will see the king's apartments and the suites of Queen Maria, which include the Chinese, Dutch, and antiquities rooms. The gardens are beautiful with sculptures, fountains, a lake, and a stream. 
A couple of things to know when you're visiting the palace. So you'll probably need about three hours to explore the palace and the gardens. It's only open from 10 until 4. The gardens are open later than that, but make sure you get there in time to give yourself time to see everything you want to see. It is closed on Tuesdays. On Thursdays it's free, but it's on a first come first serve basis. And once the tickets run out, you're out of luck. So make sure if you're going on that day that you get there in the morning so that you can get a ticket. If you're buying a ticket for one of the other days of the week, the tickets are timed. You're going to want to spend some time at Wajenki Park. So from Old Town, it's about an hour walk, or you can take the 222 bus or the 4 tram. This park is also called the Royal Bath Park, and it's the largest park in Warsaw. You want to walk around the palace on the aisle. This palace was originally a Baroque bathhouse for noblemen, and then in 1766, the king bought it and converted it into a summer residence with Eng English gardens. The gardens are free. To visit inside the palace, the old orangery and riding stables, you have to buy a ticket. Those tickets are not available online, so you just get them when you arrive, but Fridays are always free. During the summer, there are free Chopin concerts at the Chopin Monument. They run every Sunday at one o'clock and four o'clock from May until September. So if you're there during that time, make sure you stop in and see a concert. There are a few other museums worth going to in Warsaw. One is the Warsaw Uprising Museum, and this chronicles the heroic struggles of the people of Warsaw against the Nazis in World War II. To get there, from Old Town, you take bus 190 or 106, and you will need at least a couple of hours there. Another museum is the Museum of the History of the Polish Jews, and this is located on the site of the Jewish ghetto, and it goes through that a thousand years of history of the Polish Jews. There are interactive displays and reconstructions. To get there from Old Town, it's just a 20 minute walk, or you can take the bus 111 or 180. I wanna talk a little bit about some other activities to do while in Warsaw. Chopin was born about an hour west of the city, and so he's celebrated everywhere in the city. There's multiple concerts that you can go to. One I mentioned was the free ones in the park, but if you want a more organized or a more traditional concert, you can find those all over the city as well. When we are in Europe, we love to take classes, whether that's some kind of ceramics class or painting class or cooking class, something that just teaches us a little bit more about the culture and it makes us feel like we're more connected to that culture. This is also great for the kids because it's hands-on, it gives them something to do, but still a way to be learning about the country we're visiting. So when we were in Warsaw, we took a pierogi making class and this was just a, a great way to learn something about the history and culture of Poland. And of course you get to eat your pierogi and so it's delicious too. Poland is a nice place to do something like this because it's reasonably priced. The cooking class we took was about a third of the price of other cooking classes we've taken in Italy or France. So this was a great deal. My husband lived in Poland for two years in the 90s and ever since we were married he's been trying to get me to go back there with him. I've always been a little resistant thinking that there were better places to see in Europe. But when I went to Poland, I realized I was wrong. I fell in love with Poland and you will too. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.